And with that, we're going to roll right into it with Crystal Riley telling us about the stunts of Helen Gibson. Because what could possibly go wrong? Hello, I'm slightly less tall. Give me a hot sec. I think I did that wrong, but it's working. Hello, I'm Crystal. We're going to talk about Helen Gibson. Who has heard of Helen Gibson? Oh, we got a few, I, got, I got like a couple people. That's great. I, I had not, but I learned a lot. So imagine with me, close your eyes. The year is 1915. You're in the United States of America. You're on a date. You're riding in a car. Fancy for 1915. But your date is getting inappropriately handsy. What do you do? A, politely ask them to stop. B, grimace at them. C, slap them in the motherfucking face. Or D, throw them from a moving vehicle. Let's see what Hollywood from 1915 has to say. Gotta go back. Gotta play it. How do I play it? Allow me to introduce Helen Gibson. <laughs> Helen Gibson was a Hollywood actress. She started doing rodeo at about age 16. I was not doing rodeo at 16. I don't know about you. And she was already doing stunts at age 16. She was actually, she had mastered picking up a handkerchief from the ground at age 17 while riding on the back of a horse at full gallop. Horse. So let's, uh, let's just kind of break this down for a hot sec. <laughs> this is my completely to scale model. Um, <laughs> of approximately the size of a Helen Gibson and the average horse. Um, did I get that right? Yes. Um, and so if you're on a horse and the horse is going and you have to pick up something from the ground, you kind of look something like this. <laughs> if you uh, are a big fan of um, stick people, just hold your breath um, because Willow, who's speaking later, is totally gonna hook you up with the best stick figures. So, so here we are, like, you, you, know, you gotta be sitting on the horse, right? Because you gotta get back on the horse after you grab the handkerchief. And so, so you gotta, gotta kinda like be upside down. Um, and I don't know if you've ever seen a horse gallop. Um, from our document, from, from our uh, earlier I idea about where the stick figure is, I, I see that your head is gonna be about where like all the business is happening. <laughs> and so it seems like it's gonna be in the middle of some serious mayhem. And uh, so this is what Helen Gibson had to say about this. I was already practicing picking up a handkerchief from the ground at full gallop. When veteran riders told me that I could get kicked in the head, I paid no heed. Such things may happen to others, but could never happen to me. <laughs> this attitude completely led her to invent a career for herself that did not have ever existed before. A professional stunt woman. This is at the period of time when most of the time, if there were, there were women actresses, but if they were doing any stunts, any of the dangerous business, they were usually actually done by men who were doubling um, with wigs and dresses. It's called wigging and it's heavily frowned upon in the modern day. Her first uh, gig as a true stunt woman was in Hazards of Helen, who happened to have a lead named Helen, who was not Helen Gibson, but Helen Holmes. There are three Helens in this story, do not get them confused. <laughs> so Helen Holmes is the lead actress. Most of the stunts are being done by Helen Gibson, who is our star tonight. Um, so Helen Holmes is lead actress, acting it out, but anytime really anything dangerous happens, um, Hel Helen Gibson's kind of stepping in and doing the stunts. For example. <laughs> yeah, I would not do that. It looks cool. This is pre-CGI, guys. That's cool. Uh, actually, um, terrible for Helen Holmes, but good for Helen Gibson. Helen Holmes actually fell ill during the filming of one of the seasons. And um, this, uh, Helen Gibson actually took the show and ran it for 69 more episodes. 
Uh, so she was actually leading actress and doing her own stunts um, for 69 episodes of Hazards of Helen, which was airing in 1916. Uh, she was making to the tune of about 35 bucks a week, which for a lady is dope in 1915. It's about 850 bucks a week. I would love to make 850 bucks a week. Um, and she was doing stunts like this. She was doing stunts like jumping from a car, on, jumping onto a real car, onto a moving train, and doing bicycle jumps. And amazing, amazing stunts, especially for the era, and completely making a riveting show for ladies doing really cool stunts and not having men do it for them. One of her, uh, this is actually what she had considered when she wrote her biography to be her most dangerous stunt. She once leapt from a car, which was parked on a bridge, and jumped from that bridge, in the car, on the bridge, onto a moving train. So I know you've all, you've all probably like stood on a bridge and like seen the train go underneath you and it like rumbles to ground and you're just like, it's like right there, I can like touch it. But I bet you never jumped on it. It's probably a good idea. That's called common sense. Um, but in this stunt, uh, this, this is her, her short film. That guy got thrown out. What? You see how she almost fell? She said that was not planned. She actually did almost fall during the stunt. She actually practiced this stunt. She had actually left 15 times from the car onto the stationary train. But during the shot, they actually had to run the train for a quarter mile. Is it running again? I have no idea. I guess so. Um, so she actually had to jump from. She actually practiced it 15 times. Uh, but the train was stationary. And so when she actually did it, it was the first time she'd actually done it on a moving train. Uh, and so the, the train actually, because you know this is like 1915, the train had to go a quarter mile that way, and then it had to get up to speed, and then she had to jump on it. The rocking of the train, because it had never been moving before, the train was kind of wobbling. She said she, she forgot about that aspect. Um, and so when she landed on it, it rocked, and uh, she kind of slid, and she grabbed onto an air vent, and she had dangled off to the side. For that reason, she considers it her most dangerous stunt, stunt and we're lucky enough to get it in film. Uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's definitely not something I would do. So that was during Hazards of Hallin, uh, which wrapped up 119 serial episodes, which actually makes it the longest serial film series in, in history. Serial film series, yes, in history. Um, and then she got hired by Universal Pictures um, to the tune of about 125 bucks a week. That's uh, 2,500 bucks a week in today money. Um, so she became the leading actress of a couple shows, including The Rustlers, which is a pretty popular show from the early silent film era. And she started, she actually signed on to an even bigger gig with the Capitol Film Company to the tune of 300 bucks a week or 4,000 bucks a week in today money. So she was doing really well and she was quite frankly, one of the only professional stunt women actually doing her own stunts and doing leading actress roles during this time period. But it's not all roses and rainbows. There are, some, there are plenty of tough times that meet somebody when you are trying to trailblaze a new field, especially as a woman. And she ran into quite a few of these. For example, she was doing her rodeo shows as a great money maker whenever uh, she couldn't find any acting gigs because she could still pick up handkerchiefs off the ground without getting kicked in the head, apparently. And so there's one time she was at a rodeo in Salt Lake City, Utah. And she uh, won the trick writing competition. I bet she did. Um, and the promoter of the rodeo skipped down and did not give her a cent of the prize money. This is her husband, also a Hollywood actor, Hoot Gibson, as he's named. Uh, he was also a, a, a rodeo star and a Hollywood actor, um, but he was drafted to the army in 1918. Um, and when he returned from 1918, it's right when um, Helen Gibson was like wrapping up um, Hazards of Helen, making really good money, got hired by Universal Pictures. She's doing, having a really successful career. And um, once he got back from the army and saw her being so successful, he divorced her because his ego couldn't handle being married to someone more successful than him. It's kind of a lame -o. Uh, a quick sidebar, if we're, if we're allowed to sidebar in this. Uh, when, I, when I was doing the research for this, uh, it's so much easier to find information about Hoot than it is about Helen. 
which is actually really interesting because Helen Gibson at one point in her life started a uh, producing uh, a, a, pr a production company um, of which he was the leading actor of many of the films in the production. And yet I only found a half sentence ever mentioning that he was married to her, but about a third of the documentation I could find about her included him. So he only gets one slide and it has him with the limo on it. More unfortunately for a stunt woman, at one point she did get injured. And if you're a stunt woman and your major moneymaker is you completely throwing yourself out there and doing crazy shit and you're injured, that kind of puts a dampener on your bank account. And this is probably pre-benefits, 1915, guys. Uh, she actually did not actually get hurt doing her stunts. No, that doesn't happen to her. She had her appendix burst on her, which like completely sucks. Uh, and also since it's 1915, like it's not like non-invasive surgery is a thing. So she actually took over six months to recover from the surgery from um, getting her appendix removed. Um, and so it actually happened right as she got, got hired as a lead actress, was about to star in a show, and got her appendix burst. So the show was already being filmed, they had to find a new actress, they had to find some guy with a wig on to do the stunts for the actress, uh, and when she came back six months later, the film was wrapping up, um, and she found that her popularity has waned, like nobody wanted the stunt woman who got hurt, they were worried about her hurting herself, all that noise that people sometimes hear. Um, and so she actually found that in the six months time that she was away, she couldn't find any work. People had completely lost faith in her ability as a stunt woman because she had gotten injured. She got cast for another show. It was a little less popular of a show, but she was, she was excited about it, excited to get her name back in there, and the um, producer ran out of money and skipped town without paying any of the crew, including her. But this will not stop her. But worst of all, for... Um, not surprising for this time period. Uh, a lot of her work, especially her stunt doubling work, is uncredited. Sucks. History is cruel. But despite all of these amazing roadblocks, and at her lowest, she mentioned in her biography that after her appendix burst and that one show completely left her dry and she couldn't find any work, she ended up selling all of her jewelry, selling all of her furniture, selling her car. It's cool that she owned a car in 1915. That's actually pretty cool. She, she sold her car. It's Hollywood. I guess you can do that. Um, and then she pushed really hard to remake herself a name as a stunt woman for, in Hollywood during this time. And she pushed through. Within five years after she had kind of hit rock bottom, she was doubling most of the stars of the day, especially the, the, um, uh, all the, all the silent, silent actresses that we, that we know from this time period. She was making the tune of about 55 bucks a scene, which is pretty good money. That's about 800 bucks a scene. So... Good money. Um, and she was just doing this, just stunt doubling. This was not much of her doing lead actress roles. This is just her doing stunts for these cool shows, uh, which made her the first professional stunt woman. And she was actually filming all the way until age 69. So a nice long career for a trailblazing fem fem feminist trying to really define what it means to be a stunt woman. So here's a cheers to taking uh, calculated risks to believing in yourself against all odds, blazing your own path, and throwing harassers from moving vehicles.